Good morning and welcome New York. Tonight we bring to you an interesting story about a young decadent man trying to make something out of himself. But things go awry. We went through the trouble of finding the people who were closest to this man just tonight and interviewing them. So, let's see how it all began. So tell me, waiter, what did you see? A man wanting food? Interesting. What? Tell me more, please. I kicked them out. And? That's all. Why did you kick this man out? He didn't want to pay for his food. Interesting. So overall, this is the first interview that tells us that Soapy was hoping that he could get someone to call someone of the law's minions over to arrest him when he went into a restaurant, ate some food, and denied paying for it. But instead, he was just kicked out. So tell me, what happened between you and this soapy guy? Uh, well, I was uh, uh, window shopping, minding my own business, and then uh, this guy comes up and drop kicks my dog. That's not what happens in the story. In this interview, the young woman would not comply after giving false information, which we were very cognizant about. So tell me what happened. This guy came up and you just stole my umbrella. Interesting. Yeah. What did you see, sir? All I saw was this guy, and he was running with an umbrella, and it couldn't have been his, because it was this guy's. Very strange. Anything else you guys would like to add? Either? All of my podcast bag. This reveals that Soapy tried to get arrested and go to his insular haven by stealing a man's umbrella in front of a police officer. So I was informed that you were able to arrest this man. Do you have anything you'd like to say about that? I believe it was fairly easy to arrest this man. He just grabbed him with a piece of blood. That's not what happens in the story. Man. I would have never thought about that. Very true. Like, these homeless people, they don't get much to eat. So, like, you just throw a little bologna in your backseat, follow you right in. Jeez. This man's... It's beyond me. Charges. Did you press charges at all? So, for all the witnesses, only half of them wanted to press charges. And I don't understand the point of pressing charges on a homeless guy. He's got nothing to give. Do you know anything about what Soapy had done before this incident? The only thing I knew about was he stole that guy over there, his umbrella. Just a rude act. Interesting. Do you know how long this man is going to spend time in prison? I think we've averaged it to around three months. Hmm. Interesting. What is your opinion on this man? I don't understand his name. Like, he's homeless. He's not very clean. Why did they call him Soapy? Now, here the somewhat soporific policeman tells us that he caught Soapy with ease and quite some extra information as well. Now, those interviews were quite interesting and all, but some seem to be misleading and lack proper detail, while others are correct and very informative. In order to find the correct information, we will be investigating the situation and come back tomorrow for a full recap and analysis on this story. We will also be creating a reenactment to help visualize the story as well. But until then, have a good night, New York, and be safe out there. (laughs) The next day. So here we are, back on the story of Soapy. We have finally found out what exactly had happened last night with this man, the witnesses and the police. But before we reveal all this extremely important information, we will gather all of the witnesses and then begin the detailed recap of the story along with the reenactments played on the side. Okay, we have everyone together. So let's start from the top. Officer Fluke, 
Alright, so we interrogated the bum and found out that he was trying to get sent to jail because he wanted warmth and he wanted food. So the first thing he did was he went to um, a restaurant and wanted to eat something but not pay for his meal in order to get arrested. But instead of him being able to do that, they kicked him out because of what he looked like. They didn't think he had any money. And then he went down the street and broke a window, but the officer didn't believe that he broke a window. <laughs> Zombie came into my restaurant. He didn't pay for his food, so I kicked him out. Uh, Soapy came up to me while I was uh, window shopping and uh, asked me if I wanted to go play in his yard. And of course, with my business profession, I said, yeah. I was in a cigar shop with the fellow denizens, and he just came in and stole my umbrella. And then later I found him at an old church, and I asked him, after, when I put his, my hand on his shoulder, I asked him, what are you doing here? And he said, nothing. And I said, you're going to come along with me. And then he gets three months on the island. As I said in the previous interview, that I lured him in with baloney because he was hungry. That was not true. Because there was still an investigation going on, so I couldn't be 100% true. Amazing. What a story. Now let's go on to a quick but detailed analysis of this story, since we have already went pretty in-depth. So for the analysis, I just want to answer a couple questions and bring some context to the vocab we used. The first question is why Soapy didn't want to take charity, and the answer we came up with was that he didn't want to take that philanthropy because he didn't want his privacy invaded. He just wanted to eat and sleep in peace by himself, and so he saw the island, the prison, as his welkin. Now for the vocab used, there was decadent, which means that someone or something is in a state of moral or cultural decline, and we use the word to help describe Soapy in our introduction of the story. The second word was minion, which is a follower of a more powerful person, and we use the word to help describe police officers. The third vocab word that was used was cognizant, and it means to have knowledge or be aware of something. We use this word when we stated that we were aware that the young woman was giving false information. The fourth word was insular, which relates to an island. We used it when we talked about the island Soapy wanted to go to. The fifth vocab word was soporific, and it is something or someone that tends to induce drowsiness or sleep. We used it to describe the police officer. The sixth word was philanthropy, and its definition is giving money for a purpose or cause benefiting people who you don't personally know. We used this word to describe the charity that Soapy did not want to accept. The seventh word was welkin, which means the sky or heaven. We used this word to describe the heaven that Soapy wanted to visit, which was prison. And then the final question that we wanted to answer was what we thought this story taught us. And the answer that we came up with was that the idea that the story is trying to get across to us is that everyone has a purpose and it teaches us to feel sympathy for him and to hope for better things when he starts to arrange a better future for himself. And that was the analysis. Uh, close it out for us, Garrett. Whoa! Whoa, that was great!